Hey guys, I want to give a couple little tips here, a little walkthrough on this circuit, our final one. Okay, so here's the schematic. I'm going to start on the left and just work, work my way to the side. Okay, so uh, remember when it says VCC, that's used sometimes to indicate the positive power source. So these VCCs are all going to be going up to your red power source of your battery. Okay, um, I put new values for some of these parts around our 555 timer to get our timing pulses to the right speed. Okay, so this resistor here, 8K, 8,000 ohms. Our potentiometer, 100K. Um, the small capacitor between pins 2 and pin 1. 5 UF, um, and then the, there's a capacitor coming off of pin 5 that goes to ground, and that capacitor is 10 NF, 10 nanofarads, so very small. Um, so with these um, components, you will get a potentiometer that you can vary when you're simulating to give a good speed control. Okay, now the output is coming from pin 3, those pulses, those pulses are coming out and they're going into the clock of your 74HC93. And so that's going to pin 14. These pulses are going to be uh, stepping this chip to create the correct binary sequence out of pins 12, 9, 8, and 11. Okay, so this chip is very simple. There's really nothing going on. Um, pins 2 and 3 are going to ground. If you look, you have pin 1 connects back to pin 12. So that's maybe a little tricky. Pin 1 goes to 12. Up here, you see pin 10 going to ground and pin 5 going to positive power. Okay, so that's the middle chip. Now we're going to keep scrolling over here. Now the 74HC93 creates the binary sequence that changes every time it gets a clock pulse. So those four signals are going to be connecting across to our CD4511 to pin 7, 1, 2, and 6. Those go directly across. Okay. This chip is pretty straightforward as well. It doesn't have any other parts. Uh, we see pin 16 going up to plus 6. We see pins 3 and 4 also going up to positive voltage. And then we see pin 5 going to ground. And we see pin 8 going to ground. Okay, so you have 1, 2, three, four, five pins on your CD4511. You have five pins that are going to power and ground. Okay. You have your four inputs, seven, one, two, and six, coming from this chip. And then you have your seven outputs going A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, going to A, B, C, D, E, F, and G on our common cathode display and it goes through these seven resistors okay the display has pin 8 pin 3 and pin 5 going to ground and that display has to be set to common cathode I've seen that issue on a couple of your projects alright so I stepped you through the circuit here is really nothing new it's just a bit more complex so um, I haven't seen anyone join me yet with any questions so I hope it's going well if you have any questions, join me at the Hangout. All right, guys, there you have it, our automatic number counter. Have a great week, and look for the Ed Puzzle. It's going to be due next week.